Mother's Day is this weekend, and for many, it's a day of celebration. But for women struggling with fertility issues, which affect nearly 15% of couples trying to conceive, it can be a difficult day indeed. And a recent survey by Reproductive Medicine Associates of New Jersey finds misconceptions around infertility are quite common. Joining us now is Dr. Tom Molinaro, a fertility specialist with RMANJ. Dr. Molinaro, thanks so much for being with us. Tell us about some of these misconceptions your survey unearthed. Are Americans just too optimistic when it comes to getting pregnant? In, in fact, that's what we found. And so in this survey that we performed at uh, Reproductive Medicine Associates of New Jersey, we polled uh, a thousand individuals who were either actively trying to get pregnant or planning on attempting pregnancy in the next five years. And what we found was that over 90% of respondents actually thought that getting pregnant wouldn't be very difficult at all. In reality, um, the CDC estimates that roughly uh, one out of eight couples will have trouble getting pregnant, which is about 12%. And does this have anything to do with age? It has a whole lot to do with age. Okay. In fact, um, as uh, busy women have delayed childbearing uh, in the hopes of pursuing their careers, what we find is that uh, as a woman ages through her mid to late 30s, it just becomes harder and harder to become pregnant. Um, in our study, actually, we found out that roughly 25% of couples were having some difficulty getting pregnant, which is actually something that is much higher than the numbers reported by the CDC. Right, now, because it's not always the woman, right? There's an increase of male infertility as well, correct? Absolutely, absolutely. Roughly one-third of our couples will have a male factor problem as well. Oftentimes, the male factor is in addition to the female factor. Right, oh, so my goodness. You end and up with a... That is, that is a very complicated situation. Now, in, in terms of embryos, when, you, when you're undergoing IVF, which a lot of couples do, is there a misconception around how many embryos are needed to create a pregnancy? Absolutely. So for many, many years, infertility treatment and IVF were associated with multiple pregnancy. And in fact, across the country, roughly 35% of pregnancies from IVF involve at least twins. Um, what we're seeing now, though, is that advances in technology, the ability to do genetic screening on embryos, the ability to better select out embryos means that we don't have to use multiple embryos with every IVF cycle. And in fact, in two thirds of our IVF cycles at RMA and J, we use one embryo at a time. And so we're able to have some of the highest success rates without the risk of twins or triplets. Um, and we know those pregnancies are more complicated. They're harder right. on moms, they're harder on the babies. And it's definitely something that we want to avoid. Absolutely. Now tell us about comprehensive chromo chromosome screening and how that can help with pregnancy. Right. So humans have 46 chromosomes. 23 come from the egg and 23 come from the sperm. Eggs do make mistakes sometimes, putting in the wrong number of chromosomes. And in fact, older eggs make more mistakes. Uh, so women who approach age 40 have roughly 75% uh, of their embryos um, will be unbalanced. So with comprehensive chromosomal screening, or CCS, uh, we're able to um, take a small biopsy of the outer part of the embryo where the placenta is going to develop and use those cells to perform a chromosomal analysis. And with that, we're able to identify which embryos are most likely to implant and result in a healthy pregnancy. And so one embryo that's chromosomally normal, even in a 40-year-old woman, has approximately a 60 to 62% chance of resulting in a baby. And so now you see why we can put back fewer embryos and still end up with really high success Absolutely. rates. Absolutely, that makes a lot of right. sense. Now, age is important, obviously, when you're trying to become pregnant, but does it matter if you've had a child before? In other words, as a woman trying to get pregnant in her late 30s who has given birth before, does she have a slightly higher chance? That's a great question, and it's something that we uh, often see. Obviously, a couple who've been successful before have a slightly better prognosis because we know that uterine factors are probably not an issue. Mm -hmm. um, at the end of the day, though, uterine factors, true uterine factors, probably make up le less than 10% of our patients' problems. And so the biggest issue that we see is eggs. We don't know how to make new eggs. We don't know how to fix eggs. And older eggs are just harder to work with. So there's nothing you can do about that. All right, Dr. Molinaro, thank you so much for giving us the latest on infertility issues.